Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark Tober Review for Aries Sunshine and Aries Rising. We have a very interesting month with some uh, uh, different aspect pa patterns to look at. Uh, we also have four planets turning direct, um, so the energy will start to flow more freely. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to look at Mercury. Mercury is retrograde as we start the month, and will be until the 18th. Now, Mercury is retrograde in your seventh house, but this is an ideal opportunity to work with the, uh, the retrograde energy. And to do this, you can examine your relationships and see where there may be um, small or minor problems that could be smoothed out now before they escalate and get bigger in the future and become a real problem. Uh, now, the other thing to do is to make sure your boundaries are good um, so there's no crossover. Um, there are, should be clear lines where your jobs end and others start or your responsibilities end um, so you don't cross over and start doing other people's jobs or work. On the second, we have uh, a unique aspect pattern, which is called a kite. Now, this is basically a grand trine with added aspects, and it has an opposition running through it. And the focal planet of this kite is the sun. Now, the sun is moving through your seventh house. So again, there's a very strong influence this month on the seventh house and your relationship with other people. Um, this aspect pattern can stir you into action. It's the uh, abilities of the grand trine um, and the extra motivation of the other, other aspects, which are a, an opposition and two sextiles. So this is good. You've got four days now to tap into energy and the focus will be on others, motivating others, using the um, interaction with others to spur yourself on and to achieve. There's help uh, with the kite aspect on the first because uh, Venus makes a positive aspect of Pluto. And this will help with the understanding of your emotions. There will be strong emotions, but you'll be able to gain more insight into your relationships through this. And also on the third, there's an aspect between Mercury. Remember we said Mercury's going retrograde in the seventh? Well, uh, he makes a positive aspect of Jupiter. So this will help you as well to plan and reorganize things. On the 5th we start a period of 6 days where you'll have high energy and drive and ambition to get on and do things. Um, this is a conjunction between the Sun and Mars in Libra. It's also in your 7th house so there's still a heavy concentration um, on your 7th house for this month. Um, we also need to look at relationships with this. Um, if you're not happy with the relationship then it's a good time to make some changes. You'll have the drive and energy to put into uh, relationships now and it's good to work with others. It's good to um, do something that's physical, a project alongside with other people and channel that energy. If you're doing mental work you'll need to exercise or go to the gym to get rid of some of that physical energy because it's high energy for six days. On the 6th we have a new moon. The new moon is in Libra, so it's about gaining balance. It's about restoring equilibrium in your life if it's become unbalanced. Um, so that things run smoother and can be much more enjoyable for you. Now the new moon in the 7th house continues that theme of uh, other people and the emphasis on relationships. This is a good time to start new relationships, make new connections, but it's also a great time to redefine existing relationships and strengthen them and make them uh, more solid going forward. Also on the 6th, uh, Pluto is our first planet to turn direct. So it's like he's moving from the dark now out into the light. Things become more apparent, more visible um, and easier to work with. Uh, Pluto's in your 10th house, so it's time to make changes and transformations in that area. This is your career area, your chosen path or your public standing. It's time to make those transformations and start making um, Pluto work for you. While it's been retrograde, it's probably been dormant. You've probably had the energy turn in but been more thoughtful. Now it's time to take action. And if you have any planets at 24 degrees, these will be greatly affected by this direct motion. Mercury joins the Sun and Mars on the 9th and forms a triple conjunction. Uh, now Mercury is retrograde, so he'll help you to look within. With Mars, he can help you look to see if you've been wasting energy or time on needless things. So you can um, adjust that. 
Also with the sun, uh, Mercury will help you look at your inner light. Is it shining bright and beautiful? Or has it gone a little bit dull? Has the uh, brightness dulled a bit? If so, you need to analyze this, make changes uh, so that your light can shine. Make the most of your full potential and your talents. Also on the 9th, Venus makes uh, opposition to the North Node, which is also a conjunction to the South Node. Now this can bring uh, karma, drama into your life. This can bring uh, people from the past or past behavior patterns. They can resurface, um, but you need to ignore these. You need to put them away because the past is nothing new to teach you. And go to the, the North Node. North Node is our spiritual way forward. This is a good time to communicate with people and open your heart up a bit and to uh, keep your boundaries, but to try and invest in more closeness and intimacy with people. On the 11th, Chiron makes a positive aspect to the Black Moon Lilith. Uh, Chiron's in your first house. This is a good time to be an individual, to be a unique person. This will give you the confidence to express yourself and trust your instincts and you can you can do things that you probably wouldn't normally um, dare to do but uh, dare to be individual dare to be unique you could also with your wisdom and knowledge help uh, other people get over their uh, issues or their or their wounds and hurts Venus makes an aspect to uh, Saturn on the uh, 13th and this is also a positive aspect. Saturn has now turned direct and Saturn will help to guide you when he's direct onto the right path and make sure you uh, progress down that path. But with this aspect of Venus on the 13th, it's a good time to uh, discuss things openly, uh, discuss your obligations and your duties, uh, especially with friends and colleagues and within group situations as Saturn is in that 11th house. Also humanitarian issues can come into it as well. This is a good time to discuss all these and uh, get things out in the open um, regarding your uh, duties and responsibilities. Between the 14th and the 17th we have what is known as a mystical rectangle in the chart. Now this is where two oppositions cross. Uh, this is Mercury and uh, Chiron and Venus and the Black Moon Lilith. And the cross uh, it's filled in by two sextiles and two trines. So this make what looks like a, an envelope. Now, this means that your talents and your energies can easily be harnessed because the uh, harmonious aspects take the sting out of the oppositions and, and you can easily channel, channel that energy. This is fire, air, energy. So it's, and, and it's extroverted as it's in the masculine side. So you, this is a good time to harness this energy uh, and use your talents, put them to good use. Uh, maybe a cause or a project that you have, um, you can invest that time and effort, use those talents wisely. On the 15th, we have a feel-good factor because the sun makes a positive aspect to Jupiter. Now, um, this can bring new people into your life, exciting, people that can be beneficial to you in the future. It's also good for socialising and enjoying time with friends, but it's also good for making changes as well because you'll be in a positive, buoyant mood. Then on the 16th we have our second kite aspect. Now this one will focus on Mercury, and this is more interesting than the first one because we spoke about Mercury being um, retrograde in your seventh house. Well, during this Kai aspect, which lasts between the 16th and 21st, Mercury will actually come stationary and then turn direct. So it'll be very interesting to see for you what happens regarding um, that seventh house at this time. Um, sometimes it, it can feel like fate, but it's not really fate, it's because opportunities come up. Um, the energies are conspiring to, to, to bring positivity and to bring a dynamism into your life so that you can make the changes. Um, and let's see if this is um, a good positive step forward. On the 17th we have uh, a square aspect. This one's between the Sun and Pluto. Uh, square aspects are challenging and this is no exception. Pluto's in your 10th house and, and the Sun's in the 7th house. So um, relationships, career, uh, your public standing, this is the area where purging needs to take place. The key word for this aspect is to purge. So if there's relationships that are no longer working, end them. If there are behaviour patterns that are coming through in your career or your 
or your public standing or your destiny, then they need changing. Um, get rid of the old behaviour patterns and start some new, more constructive, positive ones. Then on the 18th, there's a more positive aspect because we have Mars making a trial aspect to Jupiter. This will bring you great energy, confidence. Uh, this one lasts for three days. So you can um, use this. Um, again, it's a physical energy, um, so it's no good for doing mental tasks. Um, use the physical energy, if not exercise, to um, dispel any irritation. On the 20th, we have a full moon. Now, the full moon's in Aries, your sign, and it's in the first house. Now, the full moon in Aries is about pushing the boundaries. Try something new. Um, take your time, there's no hurry, but it'd be good to focus on yourself now. All month you've been focusing on other people, and now with the full moon in your house, the first house, it's time to do something for yourself. Don't lose sight of others, but just do something that you can enjoy. On the 21st, Mars makes a square aspect to Pluto. So this will make you dynamic. This will make you want to assert yourself and be, uh, be very uh, physical. Um, it's not an aspect for mental uh, things, and, and so it's best to, uh, if you have to sit behind a desk, to get some exercise and do something to get rid of some of that physical energy. Now, while you're trying to assert yourself, um, just be wary that you may come up against someone else who's who's doing the same, um, especially in the uh, work area. Um, so just be mindful um, of other people and uh, everything will be fine. Venus makes two aspects. Uh, the first on 26 is a square to Neptune. So this could be a day when you could be quite unrealistic. There could be daydreams that are uh, going through your head and you may not be able to concentrate as well. But it's good for imaginative, creative work. On the 28th, the other aspect is to Jupiter. This is a positive aspect to Jupiter. Jupiter has now turned direct, so this is a very enjoyable day. It's a day when you can socialise and have fun. And then the last aspect of the month is on the 29th, and this is another difficult square. This time is between the Sun and Saturn. Now, with this square, it could be that there are responsibilities and duties that you need to attend to, um, and it could be that there's something highlighted today um, that you need to put right. Um, with Saturn um, and the Sun, there is uh, lessons to be learned and there are things to be put in order. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, review for October. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. If you'd like to leave me a message, I'd be glad to hear from you.